Hello, welcome back. This is My Mate Bought a Toaster, the show that invites on people who then open their Amazon account and I tell their life story through the things they've bought. My guest this week is the fabulous comedian, so funny, and he's wearing a green boiler suit, which is also, I mean, sartorially very, very high-end Paul Foot. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, the effort one must make, you know. Yes. For yes. a podcast. Yes. A big podcast like this, a one of the po- one of the big guys. Yes, always to wear a nice boiler suit. Do you have a variety of colours? Because you're wearing a, a lush lawn green at the moment. Yes, I've got a bright red one. I've got a blue one that I tend to wear only on stage for the show because it's my show. It's like ties in with a poster. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And I've got a pink short-sleeved one for the summer. Oh, wow. <laughs> you've, you've got a boiler seat suit for all seasons yeah for four, all. four for each season yeah and they're quite warm actually when you wear them yeah but also quite cool in summer when did you first enter the world of boiler suits uh, maybe about one year ago what? initially tentatively yes of course uh, perhaps wearing it uh, for my shows you know but then taking it off after and getting changed into other clothes yes. then realizing i can wear a boiler suit all the time i feel like there's something in that that the person you are on stage is your real person, and now that's 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 leaked out into your actual life. The the for, the sort of strength you feel to wear what you like on stage, you know what I mean, and wear something expressive and different. And I, now think, you just wear it. I think so because years and years ago, years and years ago, I used to just wear um, like um, this is twenty years ago, just like jeans and a t shirt. That's all I wore classic, on stage, classic, yeah. sort of tight, sort of tailored t shirt. Yeah. But then one time I. Uh, 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 I went to a show and then I was wearing like a tie and a strange sort of cardigan mm. and then uh, another comedian said "Why? Well, uh, this is unusual and I said I've just been at a family sort of party and this is sort of what I wore because it was like a more formal like someone's 80th birthday or something mm. Mm. and then he said well you should wear that on the stage every time Okay. and then that led to wearing different clothes and I actually went to like a stylist who took me around and found all different clothes and I yeah. My at that time, my sort of brief was eccentric English lord, and I had lots of sort of, um, you know, things with checked patterns and yeah. things like that. And then, um, and then I'd wear them on stage because it sort of fitted the, the, my stage performance. Yeah. And then, as you say, it becomes you because then I would think, well, I better wear it because I'm going to that meeting with Channel Four, whoever it was. And I'm known as that guy. So I wear that. Yeah. And then you'd think, well, I'm wearing it anyway because I'm having lunch with so and so. Yeah. And then you'd start, and then it, you would become. That's what I'm saying. You'd become the outfit, and then you'd wear it all the time. There's no more Mufti for foot. Yes. You're Paul Foot twenty four seven. And then, and then it, as it all evolves, that mm. then evolved into. Uh, less of a sort of uh, sort of less sort of fusty, I suppose, yeah. into sort of leather jackets and sort of a tie that looked all sort of, but the tie was all sort of short and loose and sort of not done up properly. Yeah, and that led to a sort of different feel. Right, and then that's now led into this um, uh, 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 boiler suit feel. Yeah, yeah, and then one just. Uh, one evolves. I feel more relaxed now. I'm in this boiler suit. Different sort of feel. The it's power of theme. uniform is a huge thing. Yeah. For good and bad. But I always like it for almost anonymity when I, when you're at school and things. The idea that you just sit in a uniform and you don't have to worry about how you're perceived for making choices, especially when you're a kid, right? A choice with fashion can be dangerous. Well, that's the idea of a school uniform, wasn't it? That's it. But I always found it very crushing. I always found that any idiosyncrasy I wasn't able to do if I want to have my tie a bit shorter yeah or any change to anything you couldn't do it did that bother you then it did bother me I couldn't wear I had to wear gray tra- I think they said was it gray trousers awful. why didn't they just say black trousers awful well they do but, nowadays but they said gray yes, and then they do, it had yeah. to be within a certain range of gray oh that's too light a gray that's too dark a gray I mean, what is there some headmaster with a dulux you know color chart well, was, as you yeah. come in yeah, and that's ridiculous. Was, oh, that's too much on the hem and this, and that's too much mm. like this, and mm. it was all sort of very complicated. Um, we've talked about clothes a lot, and obviously it's interesting. Actually, it does tell, tell you know it. You find out loads about people. We get into the clothes tangent, yeah, which we've done. There's also a tactical reason for doing it, which is we've got a pad because um, this show is about going through your Amazon purchase history, Paul. How oh. many things have you ever bought on Amazon? Uh, one thing. And well, I say one thing. 
a multiple it was a multiple purchase of seven um uh, sort of whatever you call it of oregano oil pills because well, you see the thing is i wanted oregano oil pills i could get them in bulk order to make a saving yeah my mother well it was one of those things where my mother and stepfather and they said oh i really should oh it's ever so good for the health and something to do with my stepfather had had some health problems but it was relieved after having the oregano oil pills. Okay. So I was in that situation where I couldn't not have them. Yes. Because every time I had a cold or felt a bit run down or was even just a bit tired, maybe I hadn't slept that well that, that night, yeah. they would immediately then say, have you been taking the oregano oil pills? Yes. And then I'd have to say, no. And then, have you ordered them? Mm -hmm. No. So I have. So it's a bit like... You know when you're ill and all you want to do is just lie in bed and get better, then people say, oh, there's various people say, oh, you must have, oh, yeah. I always find you chewing a piece of garlic yeah. with having a bit of yoghurt. <laughs> oh, oh, what you must do, I do the other such, and you have a little bit of rosemary and stuff, stuff it up your nose. Mm. <laughs> and if you don't do it, then they'll say, Tom, did you stuff the rosemary up your nose? I didn't know. I didn't know that was going to work. And, and then they'll say, oh, you should have mm. done. That's why you died. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they'll say. You know, at your funeral, that's what they'll say that's what they when say. you're there in your boiler suit. And you can be like... they say, well, he never had the oregano. You can be in bed for like a week, yeah. with like like fighting the infection, and they'll say, you'd have been, you'd have been over it in a day <laughs> if you had the thing. So in the same way, I have to have the uh, oregano oil pill. This is some sort... I'm sure you've made a rod for your own back here. This is really an ongoing... So do you still have them now when you get ill? You have to go to the oregano pills? Well, I have them every day because I... But I, you know, otherwise, God. if I became ill, they would say, have you been taking the oregano pills every day? This is like a, this is how gangsters work. Yeah, I need to have them every day. This is how gangsters work. They go into a shop and say, you want to you wanna keep your shop going in this town? Give us, you know, 10% of your profits or whatever, $50 a day. Otherwise, we're going to smash the crap out of your shop. You've got this, but with our oregano tablets. Well, that's exactly, in fact, it was more, more than that, they they were the gangsters in this case because they said I needed to take oregano pills. So they gave me, a, I don't know what the name of the thing is. No. The jar. It's not a jar, is well, it? We could say jar. Go for jar. The plastic thing they come in. I don't know what I'm the not name, on Amazon on my I don't know tablet. what the name for that thing is. Oregano but... oil. So okay. they gave me a jar of them. Should we say vial? That feels vial. quite scientific. So they gave me a jar of them and said, you know, for an immediate crisis, you know, you must get straight onto it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, of course, I had to then replace the jar they gave me. Uh, yeah, okay. So then I was then immediately into the bulk purchase. I needed to buy at least two, one for me and one to give back to them. Right, Then okay. I discovered you can make a saving if you buy seven at once. Yeah. So that's my purchase I've You're made. bulk buying oregano. Yeah, I'm bulk buying oregano and I've bought... <laughs> That's my first thing I've ever bought on Amazon. I think if we sat here and you hadn't told me what you'd bought, I wonder how long I'd sit here in a sort of um, infinite monkey so in a typewriter way. How long would it take me to get to Oregano? Well, we could have done the 20 guesses, couldn't we? Yeah. It's too late now because I know. Yeah, it's I too can't, late. I can't. That but Pandora's it, box. When I think of something else later that I've ordered that's unusual. Yeah, please do. I'll play that game. Let's play that game again. Um, there's a reviews of Oregano... Uh, for life, wild oregano oil. Description: yeah. the wild oregano oil. Yeah. Is this what? Are you on the oil? Or are you on the tablets? Oh, uh, I'm not on that. I'm mm. not on that oil. I'm on the tablets. Is it wild no, oil? this is not. Not not the thing. It's organically cultivated in Greece. It's distilled exclusively with steam, without the use of solvents. Due to its high concentration in in carvacrol, over eighty five percent, and low concentration in thymol, the oregano essential oil possesses excellent beneficial properties for the human organism. Now, that's where I start to go, I think science just left the building. Do you know what I mean? That sentence, excellent beneficial properties for the human organism. What hmm. does that mean? Um, well, you see, the thing is, you're talking to the wrong person. I need to take this every day now, and it's now psychosomatic. Yeah. If I don't have it, I'll be thinking, oh, my God. Well, could this be some sort of um, intervention? 
in your oregano addiction. What, that, that, that you stopped me having to... Yeah, today's episode is called My Mate Bought Less Oregano. Yeah, well, it's a sort of super... It becomes a superstition, doesn't it? That's, r- that's right. I'm going away on tour tomorrow for about 12 days. Yeah. If I didn't have my oregano, you know, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm having to get through... So you literally go, boiler suits, oregano, jokes. Yeah. Paul Foot's on tour. We will tell you what the tour dates are, by the way, very shortly, because oh. you should go and see Paul Foot live. He's very, very funny indeed. It's not just oregano oil material, is it? You oh, no, no. Stuff. So there's other... Topical there's... application, acne, insect bites, toothache, etc. Dilute two to five drops in half a teaspoon of olive oil and apply topically. Toothache, toothache etc. presumably means having toothache and also not having toothache. Yeah. <laughs> having, oh, my teeth feel fine today, but I need to take oregano oil. Does anyway, or... just in case. Does oregano oil... So here are the questions that Google comes up with yeah. when we say, does oregano oil, right? There's a few. Remove skin tags. It doesn't. No, I do remove skin tags, though, with um, that cryo tag. Oh! It's that, that thing that's minus 274 degrees, and you yeah. put it on, it burns it. Oh! oh. It's marvellous. Are you a skin tag kind of guy? Well, I just, I had a few, not very neck-wise, many. Neck-wise, because often people get them around the yeah, neck. Yeah, a few around the neck, you know. And then, um, and on it, it says you mustn't push it onto the skin. I ignored that. Oh, you absolute. Just get it right on. Well, you can do what you like because you've got oregano oil. Well, yeah. So you can get as injured as you need to or burnt as you want because you've got the oil to, <laughs> to It's come only a thing. little tiny burn. And mm. then people say, oh, what's that funny mark on? And then it goes off and then the, then the skin tag falls off. Right, okay, fine. So marvellous. So don't use oregano oil for that. Does oregano oil expire no no it keeps forever okay. well i think so i mean it's still going to have the same chemicals inside there isn't it it's yes. going to be unless there was some nuclear radiation or massive heat or something that went through my house it's still yeah. going to have whatever chemicals yeah are in there yeah okay so it's still got its stuff okay fine they can't really go off um does mm, this is quite useful for me does oregano oil help hair growth uh, I don't know. You've got lovely My hair. hair's growing. You've got... I've always loved what you do with the hair. So we should describe the haircut that you've got. Because I like the style with the long bits down the side and the short on top. Yes. It's good. It's like a, a mullet, but it's gone all the way around the sides. It's not really a mullet at all. In fact, there's no, the mullet's been pushed round to the sides. Yeah, it's not, it's not a mullet, technically. No, it's not. Well, what is it? What would you call it? Uh, that, that doesn't have a name. My hairdresser modelled it on my personality. <laughs> And it just says it's uh, just modelled on me. I don't know what it's called. It doesn't have a name. It's very cool. And you don't see many people with that haircut. No, there aren't many people. When, did, when did you first uh, get that? Guy? Oh, well, I had it... but sh- It's a bit shorter now at the back than it used to be. But it's more or less the same. Yeah. It's been the same for about 25 years. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, and my hairdresser just modelled it on my personality and then just carried on, really. Having your hair like that in a in a brilliant, cool way, right? And the word eccentric springs to mind, right? Yeah. Do you, or ha- how, I find that very cool. And I wish I was brave. And I wish I had done stuff like that and worn things that were different. And I always wanted to fit in, even though inside I felt like I wanted to do different stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I look at you with a boiler suit and the haircut looking cool and very poor foot. And I think, there is a man who is expressing himself. Well done, you. Has yeah. it always been easy or do you find it at times hard or have you found it at times hard to do I that? don't even think about it I, I love mean, that I just sort just of do it do I don't think oh I'm wearing a b- boiler suit that's unusual mm. I, I think wherever I go I I don't fit in anywhere <laughs> so I don't it doesn't really matter to me yes and and I'm, who needs to fit in who wants to fit in I'm now in the adult world not at school yeah so People aren't going to come up to me and say, that's when you see people what you're wearing and then throw a stink bomb in my face. <laughs> so even though there might be someone at the airport or something who thinks, oh, I don't like that. Yeah. But then it doesn't matter to me, does it? No. And uh, it surely matters what to oneself what one wears. Yes. It's like when, when you know, when people, I don't know, I mean, it's just self-esteem, isn't it? Just, yes, but that uh, and yours must be pretty robust. I think it's quite red bars. Yeah, right? yeah, I think so. But also with doing stand-up as well, you know, going on stage at maybe rougher clubs, maybe on a, uh, you know, jonglers 20 years ago. Yeah, those that was yes, in those days. Then I would be more 
uh, self-conscious, I suppose, mm. because anything that was slightly weird, they would just latch on to. Yeah, they're like bullies, right. So it wasn't like, I wasn't self self-conscious is the wrong word, but just, I was just wary because yeah. if you wore something unusual, that would just be one more thing for them to shout at you about. Mm. But, didn't, but if they did shout at you, it didn't bother you? didn't bother me other than the fact that it's not, you know, I think, I think um, when I was doing those sort of clubs a long time ago, I'd come on stage and sometimes they would just say, no, I hadn't even got to the microphone. No, no. no. And then, then there was no way back from there. Mm. So if I was very eccentrically dressed, that would be more likely to happen. So it was perhaps on a practical level, it was better to, to do something that was less likely to ha cause that to happen. And when you're doing that, the eccentrically dressed thing on stage that might be luring them out, how do you feel when they go no or they shout at you or they say stupid hair or whatever? Do you go, well, it's my character and it's me and I just don't care? Or does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Hmm. Uh, and it, they wouldn't say anything about the clothes particularly anyway. It would just be, no. that would be something for them to just think, mm, no, I don't like that. Mm. But it comes down to, uh, it comes down to context, all these things, doesn't it? And, yeah. And even, like, for example, if I was doing a, if I'm doing a TV recording or something, mm. and it's very important, I wouldn't necessarily put my brand new shoes on or my brand new outfit, because then it feels a bit like, it's like I'm making too much effort. Yes, it you want to feel like comfortable. A big thing. Yes, uh, this is something I learned very recently with an important gig. Someone said to me, "Don't wear the brand new." Exactly what you're saying. Don't wear the brand new thing that makes you feel a bit. Oh, the sleeves are a bit short and the shoes are hard. Wear the thing you feel really cool and yourself in and looks good. That's yes. that, and that really made a difference. Yeah, it's it's very important. Mm. And then if it's still important but less sort of critical, then you could wear the new. Shoes and wear them in, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does oregano oil thin blood? <laughs> I hope not. You've become. I'm so sorry. It's your fault for only buying one thing on Amazon. You've become an oregano oil spokesman. I, I, I mean, I want my blood to be of a thick, you know. Mm. Not, I don't want it all thin. You're quite healthy, though, aren't you? Quite healthy. Yes. Do you do exercise? Yeah, I do. Do um, not as much as I ought. You maybe. Everyone says that. I should get their heart pumping more, but I always. Walk up the stairs, for example. I always go up, I mean, like coming out of the tube. Mm. I always walk up the escalator, including re including a really long escalator. Yes. Hardly anyone else does. Do you start to avoid certain stops? I'm not going to Tottenham Court Road with those stairs. No, I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like going on. up the stairs. Yeah. But then I get to the top and I actually feel like my heart's been working. Yes. So I'm one of the few people who actually has just walked. Yes. I think, I suppose some people go to the gym. I think stairs are a free gym. Yeah, but some people go in a car and drive to the gym and then they have to go on some sort of machine that tells them what they've done. And yeah. then I just think, well, I might as well just walk up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> One time I was in a hotel and then uh, I was in room, I think it was room 1423. Good to know. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that would be good. I can walk up 14 flights of stairs to get to mm. the room. So I then said, like, I want to walk up the stairs, and they d they just weren't prepared for this. Yeah. They said, no, we need to take the, take the lift, sir. And I said, no, I want to go up the stairs. And there was a much... And eventually they found some way of me going up the stairs. Yeah. But then I've discovered it was all on the first floor. <laughs> like, it was uh, uh, rooms 1-1 one, one something were to the left and rooms 1-4 something were to the right. It was, all way, it was only about six stairs anyway. Still did it, though. I still, still did it. Still felt the heart going. Yes, but I do sometimes if I'm in hotels and I'm on like the 20th floor, mm. it's really good exercise. Yes. Going to the, to the 20th floor. Yeah. It really tests it. And also what's good about it is that it has a very clear goal. There is a very clear reward for you. Your room with comfort and a TV with probably the sports channels and a pretty nice shower. All those things are waiting for you. Because often you do exercise and you think at the end of this, I'm just going to get in the car and drive back from the gym or whatever. Yeah. But it's a, it's a clever idea to use the stairs because it has a very clear end point. Which is your room. And then on the yeah. way down, which is also good exercise. Is it? I enjoy going downstairs because I like to pretend I'm tap dancing. Oh. Pa, 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 and I really feel like I've got quick feet. Do you know what I mean? Like a sort of Lionel Messi. Pa, 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 pa. I don't think I have, but I like to feel like that. But is that good exercise? 
Yeah, I think it is. Oh, one time I was in a hotel and... Now, what was it? Oh, it was a nightmare. It was a disaster. Excellent. I was it got in the lift and then I went to... So it was, I don't know, like the 20th floor mm. and went to go to the ground floor. But I was with a friend and we, like, pressed a button or something and it was pressed the wrong number by mistake. Oh, God. So then sort of, like... Then he pressed another button, like, as a joke, you know. Yeah. And then I can't remember exactly what happened, but then we ended up pressing all the numbers. <laughs> and it was like, hey, that's a laugh, pressed all the numbers. Yeah. But then we went down one flight of flight, yeah. and then someone got in. Oh. And then obviously realised we'd pressed all the numbers. Were you sniggering? No, they was just eyeballing us. As we went down every single... And every time the doors open, they just look at you. In fact, I seem to remember we got to about the level 18 and then we just ran out and then ran down the stairs. <laughs> and this is where you were, you, when you were a grown adult? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, but and, not a child. But I hadn't thought it through. It was just like, oh, that's a laugh. We can visit all these numbers. And then it was just, oh, hang on. We're not the only people in this hotel. Yes. Someone's going to get really, really <laughs> pissed off. They're going to get on and, they're, and it's going to take them like... Half an hour to well, get to the bottom. Serves them right for not using the stairs. But there was no justification for what I did. I like the, I like the remorse, and I'm sure that person appreciates the remorse. But it's too late now. It's far too late. Um, I'm I'm impressed that you've only bought one item on Amazon. Do you not need it at all in your life? You don't use it. No, I don't understand um, what what I'd need it for. I it, mean, other than oregano. Yes. Oils. Uh, Anything else? There's so many things that you can buy on Amazon. There's, there's. Well, I you, I had someone who had Amazon Prime. Yes. So they would order it for me and get it sent to my house. Oh right, okay, good. So you had a sort of a I mule. Had a sort of surrogate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it was only a few things. Um, the whole point of this show is to go through your shopping history to get your life story, and at the moment we've, I mean, I feel like I've we've learned a lot. And it's been very funny so far. I feel like there's still time. Where else shall we go with this now we haven't got Amazon? So have you used, for example, um, eBay? Uh, not personally, no. Okay. Um, no, but I know that it's like an auction. Yes. Yeah, it's an auction house. Think of it as that. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah. I might have bought something from it once. Maybe. I mean, all these places sell things that you'd be interested yeah, in. Yeah, I like... think I had an account for it once. You did have an account for it? Well, I think so, maybe, but I, okay. I I always have these accounts. Yeah. And then I always forget a password, and I don't use them for years, and then I can't get back into them. They're dormant. Even at Amazon took me such a long time, because I only used it for my father. Yeah. He wanted me to order things, so I had my email. He doesn't have an email. Right, yeah. So I yeah. used my email address and, and his home address so he could order things. Wow. And then... But then I wanted to order things myself. Yes. So then I had to write to Amazon and said, I want to order. And then they blocked my account because it was sort of like suspicious. Why am I trying to change my yes. address? And then I explained that was my father's one. Oh, my life. They pulled the shutters down because you were just trying to interact. Yeah. And I had to go to like a special thing when it's like you go to some, it goes to some special department oh, but because God. i wanted to buy something they were interested because they didn't mm. want to stop me buying mm. but it, like it got escalated higher and higher to like some really senior department where some like really senior manager had to like press a button well who was it was it jeff bezos himself who well, did you get through to i don't know who it was but they were quite quite high up yeah 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 these companies they all have like hierarchies have you ever pulled that trick when you're having an issue with someone on the phone you say i want to speak to your manager do you ever do that uh, I have sometimes spoken to people's supervisors. Oh, yeah, supervisor's a good one. I'd Super never say supervisor, yeah, yeah. But, uh, normally, you manage, they just do it on their own. They say, this is a bit complicated. I'll just speak to my supervisor. I'm going to hand it up. Um, so the question then is, where should we? Where do we go next to learn about Paul Foot? So where else? We've, we've eliminated eBay from our inquiries. What about Argos? Argos, yes, I have an account with them. Can I have a look at it? Yes, I only ever ordered one thing on it. This is becoming a theme. It was uh, six years ago, and I've lost access to the... But right. I'll see if I can get into it. You have a real one-hit wonder approach. One-click wonder, you are, Paul Foot. Yeah, so I ordered them... Um, I ordered some um, chopping boards. For the oregano. Uh, yes. And um, <laughs> I ordered them, and then because it was my first time, they gave me free delivery. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, but I've never used it yeah. since. Can we see what the... Can we see the chopping boards, or...? I'm just signing in. Oh, God. okay, good luck. 
I can see he's doing it. I'm signing in securely. Can I have a look? Yeah, of course you can. Oh. I'm just seeing if it works. It's gone to a sort of blank page. I think it would have blocked you by now if it wasn't going to work. Yeah, it's gone to one of those blank pages where you don't know whether it's worked um, or not. They'll be getting notifications at Argos now. Mr. Foot is back. It's literally nothing there. It's just literally <laughs> blank. <laughs> Let's have a look at Paul Foot's Amazon purchase history. There we are. We are looking at argos.co.uk and it is 100% blank. I think it's because they're so gobsmacked that you're back. Is it because there's no internet here? Uh, no, no, you've got internet. Um, but not very good internet. Account. Because we're under the ground. Oh, here we go. Recent orders. Ah, oh, here we go. Loaded in. Oh, oh, look. So we can do this. We've got, you've got three orders. Oh, have I? Is it going to be three chopping boards? And one of them, and one of them will be those. Um, it wasn't chopping boards. It was that tup, those sort of um, Tupperware plastic container things. Oh, I love Tupperware. I bought. I love Tupperware. It's just ah, oh, an unknown error has occurred. <laughs> so we have the date of it, Monday the 29th of May. And then what Thursday, year? Twenty seventeen. Yeah, that's that's when I ordered it. That was the Tupperware. That's the plastic. Um, Mm. You know, when you want to put things in the fridge and things. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, they're brilliant. Have, you've, have you got it? I can't see it because it says it doesn't exist anymore. Tupperware is a good Argos sort of vibe. So that's one of the things I ordered. Mm. Um, Tupperware to, what, preserve preserve meals you haven't finished? Yes. Or you know, put things in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still or, got the Tupperware? Still got it, yes. Oh, still good. works well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. does it not tell you the details? Um, no, order not found. For that one because that's it's, too uh, long ago. this is why amazon's so good because it doesn't do this uh see, exactly sunday the 5th of september 2021 let's have a look 2021 what did yeah. i order then i don't know order not found yeah order not found yeah and yeah. there's no so way i could see three orders and when i go into view order details oh i think i bought a i bought a um i uh, bought a brush okay <laughs> what did you buy a br for, for hair or uh, for... for my for my cleaner okay because <laughs> she said she would needed a brush Right. Fifteen pounds. Yes. Oh, I know what it was. It was fifteen pounds. It yes. was a um but I didn't uh, have it delivered, I picked it up. Okay. It was because a, the delivery wasn't free. Yeah, it was mm. a it was a mop with a uh bucket. Yes. Because oh. my cleaner said she wanted one of those mops where you've got the thing and you can push the thing in the mm. plasticky thing and squeeze it out. Which is very satisfying. Yeah, and then I ordered something else again in September for £13.50. Any ideas? It doesn't say what it was. No, but can you remember? Because you've remembered no. so far. So we've had um, Can't remember what it Tupperware was. and a mop. So tell me about uh, the cleaning situation then. So you've got a mop with a with a bucket. Mop, mop and bucket. Have you ever used it or do you just get your staff to use it? Do you, do you sit there? Do you sit there I and just never, watch her? I don't. I have used it once ah, actually in the porch, but not really. I've never really used it. No. Okay. How many times a week does your cleaner come? Oh, uh, once a month. She comes. Once a month. Yeah. Once a month. Why only once a month? Well, I'm away quite a lot most of the time. So the house is fine. Do you live alone? Yeah. Oh, the dream. And um, yeah, I do clean things myself. You know. Yeah. But once a month is enough yeah. for the dusting and for the, for the. Uh, Vacuuming, it doesn't get very dirty, really. No, if you're not around, as well, because you're gigging all the time. Yes. Um, uh, do you like living alone? Is it nice? Yes, yeah, lovely. Oh. I love it. Tell me the best thing about living alone. It's the, I just because I've got there's too many. Well, you can do what you like. Things in my house. Yes. I mean, you just uh, walk around naked. You can walk around naked. I just like even like I, I spoke to someone they've been married for like many many decades, you know, and then mm. it was like I said. You couldn't just have a bath at two o'clock in the morning. No, you Because they'd be like, why did you do that? Oh. Even if it was very relaxed, even if it was just one of those marriages that's completely casual and relaxed, they'd still be, yeah. oh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was unusual there, Tom. Uh, you you in the bath. Uh, went in the bath what about two there? in the morning. I, I, I'd have to explain myself. Oh, um, oh, I heard your footsteps going down the stairs. Mm. You, you went down into the kitchen about 3.30. What was that about? Mm. You know? Is it all right? And, and Did the, you need an aspirin? Are you all right again? And the thing is, what you can't do in that situation is say, mind your own fucking business. No. You, that's not a happy marriage. No. If you go for a bath at 2am, what, what have you been doing? Mind your own business. I can do what I like. Do what I, like. I can't. I have to explain myself constantly to my wife, my children and my animals in my house. That's the other thing as well with dogs. Yeah. As soon as you stand up, everyone's up like a teacher in a class in an old-fashioned school standing all the up children so, you've every, trained all your children yeah yeah, yeah, yeah of course if father's in here you must yeah. stand up don't look him in the eye um so what other what other what other things can you can you do in living house by yourself do you do you have 
Are you a silence kind of guy or do you have music? Music. Oh, do you? You have music all the time. Do you? Yeah, I love music. Do you? Because I would like, I like the idea of uh, my dream, right? In the If you ever want to do this, a swap and come and live in my house for a week and I'll go to yours. I like the idea of nothing but the sound of a ticking clock. Oh. And I'm just reading. That's nice. I, I like the music. And I like the fact that I can go to all different places. Mm. Like last night, I decided to have a kind of early sleep on my sofa. It's quite comfortable on my sofa. And can I ask a quick question? Did anyone ask why you were doing that? No. No, they didn't. Because there was no one there. Because you make great life choices. And and so I just, and I it's all comfy with my nice cushion that I've made myself. And I just lay on the sofa and had a little doze. Oh. How long? Oh, about three hours. Oh, that's not a doze. Well, that's asleep. And then I got up in the night and did a load of things. What time were you up? I got up about one and I went to bed about five. Oh, wow. And then did a load of, caught up with a load of emails and loads of stuff I had to catch up with. Yeah. You know that we used to, our circadian rhythm used to be that we'd wake up between one and two and we'd do a bit of business. That's what I've always been like. And then we'd have what's called the second sleep. Yes, I've always been like that. And, And that's interesting you say that because... Uh, I've always found um, that I don't naturally just go off into a sleep for, say, eight hours. My friend Kat the other day, she slept for 11 hours, she's telling me. Sometimes I do if I'm exhausted or something. Hmm. But I nearly always have a, a short sleep, a yeah. couple of hours, and then I wake up and just... So is that circadian w- rhythm to do with when we were... Yes. In the, there was a, there in, was in the forest probably because we'd have to wake up and deal and make sure that our cave was safe. Yes, I know that some There's people in it. like me. I'm often awake in the night, mm. and I know that that's that I was one of the ancestrally would have been one of the people who was the sort of night watch guards. Yeah, and that's I was descended from those people. Ancestrally, I would have been the guy who made breakfast because at, at six seven a.m. I'm like bah, 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 I am peaked on price. Yes, eleven out of ten. And then by 6 or 7 p.m., I'm, I'm good to sleep. I'm the opposite to you. Interesting. But this is wonderful because this is really affecting me for gigs. Why stand-up, I just find exhausting because I turn up at gigs and I'm just... It's the fifth. wrong... Yes, whereas for me, it's the right time. That's when I'm just yeah. coming to life. And you've always been like that? Always been like that. And that's interesting. That's the first time I've heard that, that thing about waking up in the middle of the night for a bit and doing some stuff. Google it, the second sleep. Because I've always done that. I've always... I, I nearly always go for a first sleep and I've got four locations for sleeps in my house okay, and I can let, use any of them. Let me guess them. We've got the sofa. Sofa. We've got your bedroom. My bedroom. Now I've got, now I'm struggling, but don't tell me. The, the, se- the third one's obvious. The porch. No, sorry. Just you mentioned you cleaned it. You so. said, it's, having said what you just said. The bath. You just said, well, the bath, I suppose, is a fifth one. Yes. Could be. But... Oh, so, yeah, but dangerous. Don't, don't nap in the bath, especially when you but, live by yourself and your cleaner only comes once a month. But you just said what option number two was. Yeah. Um, the bed. Yeah, so, so, what, so what therefore we... what no, option number three is, is obvious from what you've just said. The, the, the spare bed. Spare bed, Spare yes. bed. Spare bed. And, and sometimes it's, it's like, oh, I like, it's like going for a little holiday in the spare bedroom. Oh, I love that. It's your own little personal premiere in. Yeah. I haven't been in there for ages. Treat because, yourself. Because, Have a little staycation. Because it's all clean. So I'm leaving it clean for when my next guest comes. Mm. But when my next guest comes, let's say they're just there for a couple of days, mm. I won't bother washing the sheets after they've left and I'll just get in. Uh, oh, and that's my little place to go for a little lie down. I grade my guests by whether or not we need to clean the sheets after they've been there for a night. And I'm not going to name any names, but there'll be some people who stay and I'll think, because with the spare room in our house is for, you know, kids waking up or whatever, and we just need to, one of us is ill, we go in the spare room. And there's certain people, family mostly, in fact, all our family, it's fine. If they're there for one or two nights, I'm not going to clean the sheets. Yeah. But then you do get certain friends where you think, I am going to clean this before I get yeah. back in there. I was staying with a friend recently, and then I was just there one night and slept in this bed. And then mm. afterwards I said, oh, should I strip the sheets and all this stuff? Oh, don't worry about that. She said, I'll do that later, blah, blah, blah. Do you think she was... And then I, that's when later I realised, because I came back, but I wasn't staying that next night, that she was just good. You know, she wasn't bothered. I just slept oh. in it for one night. And did you think she loves me? Yeah, and I was all clean. I'd had a bath before getting in. I was yes. all clean and that. And she was just like, she couldn't be bothered to change four pillowcases, oh. one uh, massive 
duvet thing yeah. and and I don't know how my cleaner does it. I never do the. I don't know how you do a double duvet. I couldn't do it on my own. So she does it on her own. I can tell you. Do you want me to tell you? No, I don't want to know. No, <laughs> I'm I, so I, tempted to force I, the information onto no, you. No, I want to. I wanted to. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to learn. Mm. I, I know that that's what she does. The yeah. Cleaner. Um, okay, so, so we've the fourth got location. hang on, but yeah, so we've got the fourth location. So the bath maybe is a fifth. The fourth location. So we've done well. Now I'm struggling because we've done sofa. We've done the two bedrooms. Ness is another spare bedroom. Play twenty questions. Okay, um, is it indoors? Yes. Is it on the ground floor? No. Okay. Oh, is it in your? Is there some sort of study situation? No. And it's not the bath. No. So, oh, sh- that counts as a question. I can't think what other rooms you would have, and it's not another spare room. And it's not, oh, hang on, is it in your bedroom, but somewhere else in your bedroom? No. It's not going to be in the hallway. No. How many questions have I got left? Another fourteen questions. <laughs> fourteen more questions. Well, I'm fifty because I'll scrub one out about the bath because I was just because you knew it wasn't that. This is my favourite ever episode of my more taster. Um, fifteen left. Okay, I'm just picturing your house. Um, it's not cu- that- a cupboard. No, it's not that complicated. You're being far too... Well, well. how would you mean? Complicated about it. Think of someone's house. Yeah, I've got spare room, bedroom, bathroom. That's all we've got upstairs. Is there another room I'm missing? I've said study. Yes, you're missing another room. And it's very obvious. But you'll need to think laterally. You're, you're thinking the wrong way. You're, you're getting too complicated. It's much simpler than you think. I am so... Stuck. Um, it's not the hallway. That doesn't count as a question because I'm just talking to myself now. It's not on the ground floor. We know that. Is it on the top floor? Yes. Ah. Hang on. What? How many floors have you got in your house? Two or three? Three. Three. Okay. Loft. Well, I don't call it the loft anymore because it's. It, I call it the penthouse. Oh, lovely. Because, you know, it's not a loft anymore. It used to be a loft. Okay. It had all horrible rats going around it, scratching away, and all disgusting stuff all over the place. It, it was a horrible room. But now it's a lovely place. And is that where you sleep? Well, that's one of the, you know, that's like it's like, a, it's like a, it's like a creative fantasy room that I've created. It's got like um, an octopus mural. No. Uh, with nine octopuses all holding tentacles with each other. Oh, wow. And a safari mural that my decorator, who's also an artist, did. Oh, wow. And it's also got, like, like it's got various things like desk for writing. Yes. I've got three desks in my house. Have you? Because I am, after all, a writer. Yeah, of course, prolific. And it's uh, got chairs for sitting and relaxing. It's got meditation cushions. You've got a lot of choices in your life. Yes. And it has another place for sleeping, which you still have to guess what it is. You've got a bean bag in the writing room, under an, under the view of no, an octopus. No, it's not bean bag. Uh, um, a futon. Everyone has a futon. What's a futon? Is it's one of those nineties inventions. It's like a sofa. It's like a really uncomfortable no, no, sofa. No, it's not a, really a futon. Bed. Um, not a futon. Is, is it a sofa? Sort of. A, it's a kind of sofa. A chaise long. Yes, it's a chaise long. Jacob Rees Mogg style. Yeah. So you've got now. Ten questions left. Ten questions left to guess the colour of the chaise longue, because I've always wanted so, a chaise longue in this colour. So you've got a chaise longue in the loft. Yes. This sounds like a weird game of clue under always, the octopus. I've always wanted a <laughs> chaise longue in this colour. So it was like a dream to get it. Silver? It, not silver. And also I can reveal that I ordered it and it had to come from, I suppose, China or somewhere, mm. and I could track it as it was going all around the earth to come to oh, me. And it got stuck in the Suez Canal that time when that when that big ship oh. blocked the Suez Canal for ages. Yes, of course. It tried to do a three-point turn in yeah, the I Suez don't Canal. think it was on that ship, but it got stuck behind it, it for like yeah. several months. Could, you could see it getting stuck behind it. Can you imagine if local news had come and started asking people, how have you been affected by the Suez Canal? And they'd just stumbled off upon you. Yes. Oh my, my chaise long is. And it's a nice chaise long. It's got that like curly bit at the top and curly Oh, I know. Yeah. I love a CL. Um, gold. No. Yellow. No. Orange. Correct. Orange. You still had six questions left. Ah! On the orange chaise long. Yes. In the octopus themed loft. With my blue blanket. Blue boiler suit on as well? No, I'd just be in my pyjamas then, wouldn't I? <sighs> I wouldn't wear my. 
a boiler suit in bed. Are you a PJs guy? Full on PJs. Yeah, pajama. When I get into the house, mm. I like to have all my elasticated trousers mm. and all just casual yeah. house clothing. Yeah. So when you sit down, you've got a lot of choices in your life. You can choose to write on one of your three desks. You can choose to sleep in one of your uh, four sleeping spots. There's a lot of different choices. Uh, do you struggle with that or do you just go, are you very kind of like, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go and sit up here at my desk and I know this is the right thing to do. Well, I like to move around. Yes. Yeah. And for example, on my uh, the dining table, mm. which can be extended big for people who come or small. Oh, lovely. And then I've got four chairs. Mm. And so I always swap round. So, so I never want one particular chair facing one particular direction to be... I don't want to get used to it. You don't want Paul's chair. I don't want it to be Paul's chair. No one wants that. And so therefore That's I so swap true. round. Yeah. So, oh, I always used to f sit that we're facing the window. Now I sit the other way yeah. in, in always changing it. And and the same with like, um, you know, I like to sit in all the furniture in the house. Yeah. And I think sometimes I think, well, I haven't sat in that chair for ages. <laughs> I must sit on that chair now. And this brings you joy. Yes. You live a very happy life doing this, right? Yes. One of the things I do the least, probably, is sitting on my sofa. I hardly ever sit on my sofa. Right, right. It's more for guests when they sit there. I sometimes lie on the sofa. Well, so it's a nap we know from earlier on. It's a snooze spot. It's a snooze spot. Sometimes yeah. I sit on it. Yeah. I don't have a television in my house. You don't have a TV. No. But I would say that's become less weird these days because we've all got TVs in our pockets and on our watches. Or well, that's true. Do you watch TV at all, then, on your computer? No, I don't watch it, no. Do you watch movies or box sets or anything? No, sometimes I watch Netflix. Mm. On a laptop? On the laptop. Yeah. I didn't used to. I only used to watch things on YouTube. Take me... Right, OK. I only ever watched uh, something when I'm eating. OK. It's only when I'm eating. I always like... When I'm eating, I just like to have something on. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and the rest, then it goes off after that. What do you do, then? Listen to music. Yeah, but... But what? Okay, but then what kind of music? Uh, well, mostly classical and mostly um, the choral music of J.S. Bach. Oh wow! Mostly in the BWV one to BWV two four nine range. Yeah, that's yeah. my main thing. I would have guessed that. And I've that got was going to be my next guess. A rare collection of of um, of of recordings of those pieces. Vinyl, some vinyl and some rare on like on CD like. I went on a specialist. This is going back to online orders. Good, because that is the theme of the show. A special thing. And I want to order um, BWV197 with Nicholas Harnoncourt um, conducting in 1967. Yeah. And it was so rare that it was over £1,000 on Amazon. You but, didn't. But luckily, I managed to find someone who sold it to me for only £14.99. And then I bought that. And then... I saw it come up again, and I thought it's so rare. So I bought a second one on fourteen ninety nine. And the reason for that mm. was that I thought if I ever were to purchase a second home in Singapore, yeah, which example. is unlikely, but but if I were, then yeah. I would at least have that music in both houses. <laughs> so you, you've got a spare, got a spare for when you get a second home. Yes. So you're <laughs> there's a chance that you're going to get a second home one day. Yes. And the only thing in it. Will, will be, be BW197. Because that will I'll have both in each one. But what a happy home it will be. And you so you'll sit there. So this is an evening when you haven't got a gig and Paul Foot is on tour. Go and see him live. We'll discuss that shortly. Because we're really nearly out of time, by the way. Are we? Yeah. Well nearly you haven't had to say you were gonna look through my um all my credit card statements. We're gonna do that in a minute. That's gonna be that's gonna be the big finish. Oh, don't is it? don't reveal that we we prepared this before the show. Oh. We'll do it in a spontaneous Well, way. I'm not allowed to reveal the fact that we spoke to each other before the show. That's right, yeah. The, we just came in. For the first time in 15 years, we've spoken as the microphone started right, recording. Right, yes, yes. yes. Um, so when you're not gigging, you'll sit there and you'll listen to music. You, would you read? Uh, well, I might read a book of fiction, uh, oh. non-fiction. Oh, right, okay. I haven't read any fiction since I was 16. Oh, my God. Really? I was very well read at school. I read loads and loads of books. Yeah. And when I got to 16, I stopped reading. Why? Well, I think I was too busy writing. Mm. And then I sort of... But I learnt, I've learned from all that reading. I've learned how to spell well. Yes. And I've learned how, when to use the semicolon and things like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I think I can write quite well. So they, they were your sort of verbal stabilisers for the first 16 years and you don't, you don't feel you need them anymore. So, so you just, don't read any fiction? 
I don't read any fiction. You don't really? You watch a bit of Netflix? Yeah, a little bit of Netflix, only because my neighbour, uh, she lets me use her... It's all legal. Mm, go on. But she ha she's got a thing where she found she could save money. Yeah. She could pay less, but she gets the f occasional advert, and she can add a second person. So she added me as her second person. Oh, that's so, so sweet. It's all legal. So I, I go in and as the second person. So you've got free Netflix from your neighbour. How lovely is your neighbour? Well, she's wonderful. She comes around every day and we always watch something on TV together. Oh, we haven't got TV. Well, on the on the on the laptop. Laptop. We always watch it at the laptop at my at my um, dining table, and then I and then I uh, like I might eat a meal. She's already eaten. She always says, "Oh, I've just uh, just having a hot pot tonight." She says, I'll be round about 8.15. And I say, OK, come round at 8.15. Then oh. she pots round at 8.15 and I'll eat my d supper. And then we play the thing. And it, the, one of the running jokes is that if we watch something that like an hour long, yeah. it probably takes us two hours to watch it because I'm always pausing it <laughs> because I need to gr go out to get something. And then she pauses it because she has to go to the loo. And then I say, <laughs> and then it, well, it takes, and then sometimes I pause it to make a, comment about what we're watching and we'll then she's and then she's makes a comment and so it all takes yeah. ages the power of pause can you imagine like what going to the cinema now gives me a panic attack i can't pause it yeah i find it really weird sometimes like it like i know it sounds stupid but i was at the australian open uh, men's final and it was right. so exciting when uh, this year <laughs> Okay, right in melbourne because you there. go and gig out there yes yes yeah i wasn't gigging there i was just out there oh right okay I'm not gigging there this year. I gigged there last year, so I'll probably go next year. I go Good every two years. But we I'm have listeners in Australia. Good to know. That's you know they'll be there. Yes, yeah, so I go there quite often at that time of year. Anyway, so I was out there, and then, um, and I was just watching a live match. Yeah. And there was a bit of me that, when there was an amazing rally, wanted thought, oh, I can see the replay. Oh uh, no! And I, I realised yes. no, I can't see a replay. This is happening in front of <laughs> yeah, my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's it, we're so used to it. It's a bit like if you read a uh, a book, a paper book. Sometimes I want to zoom in, or if I'm reading the newspaper in newspaper form. Sometimes there's a picture I want to zoom in. And I go, I get my fingers ready to zoom in on paper. You can't, you can't do that. You can't zoom. Life is analog, and yet our worlds have become digital. I don't quite know what that means, but it sounds profound. Yes, it's incredible. Um... Uh, what is a, there's a name for one of the things like that, aren't there? When it sounds profound, but it isn't. I think it's, it's just called... a little tripe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, but there's an actual name. Word salad. Word salad. It's yeah. one of my specialities. Um, look, Paul Furtz, before you go... Oh, yeah. What, uh, 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 what... It's just, I just thought, it's just an idea love, that just occurred to me. Love is just a word. Oh, yeah. That's an example of one of those things that sounds like yeah. it's really profound, but it mean? means nothing. Sloganism. I'm a big fan of doing that. And then occasionally I might pick up people who are simple-minded enough to think that I'm clever. That's how you, you know, it's how you start a movement. What, just, what, saying just trite <laughs> comments? Shit, yeah. The trite movement. <laughs> the trite movement, that's what yeah. we're going to do. It, it's going to work, and one yeah. day we'll march. Yes. But I don't know where, we'll just march in our hearts. It's an, mm. example. It's an example of the art form. Um, before you go. Yes. And it has. this has been wonderful to chat to you. Oh, it's been and very nice. Thank I, you. Thank I, you for inviting me. No, of course. I think you're brilliant. And, and you are on tour at the moment, and everyone should go and see you. Um, how can we find out details about Paul Furt? Oh, well, um, I'm on tour with my show Dissolve. Yes. And what people should do, if they go to HTTP, <laughs> I don't remember when it used to be like that. that you used to have to... Colon, colon. And it was a semi... Uh, what was it? Um... Colon yeah. four, 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 four yeah 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 you HTTPS remember? as well. But it used to one? be like that. That you used yes. to actually have to you used to have to go on like radio and say HTTP www World Wide Web. Anyway, people can uh, it's Paulfoot.tv or they can Google Paulfoot. Oh great. Um, uh, other uh, no other search engines are not available. No, they are. This whole point, they're not available. Google's eaten those. They've all been. They're gone. Yeah, there yeah, aren't gone. any other ones. Google's killed them. Now just use they're Google. Not available. Um, Paul, Foot, before you go, there's one thing I'd like to do. Yes. Because you haven't given me anything on Amazon, and yet we find out so much about you. Here, here's an idea. Grab your phone. Yeah. Let's just let's just do one thing before you go. Yeah. If we're going to talk about shopping and what it tells us about you, 
Why don't we go to the source that will always tell us what you've been buying? Have you got a bank account you could just quickly show me on your phone? I could just have a quick nose. Yes, yes. And I promise if there's anything too illuminating, I'll definitely use it. Sorry, I'll definitely edit it out. Yes. Well, you can look at my American Express. You're perfect. What are you, silver, gold, platinum? I don't know, some pl platinum thing. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. You're an airport lounge guy? Uh, airport, British Airways. Yes. Well, they oh, have, have, have shows longs in their... Uh, a one-time just... password. Every time it says a one-time password. Every time. And every single time it says, um, next time mm. we'll remember this thing so you don't have to. Amex is hooked on passwords like a I drug I want dealer. to remember this device. Use this device. Yes, yeah, next 30 days. Yes, remember it. Remember next it. Next time you used to log oh, in. Oh, mine's the same. Mine's exactly the same. It's a, it's a nightmare. Well, it's, I mean, obviously it's good that they're making checks. That's better than them not making checks. So do you want a whole statement from... Uh, Hey, go on then. Let's just get, let's have your latest one. Let's just have a look. This is just recent transactions, which yeah, only not? goes back so far. Yeah, so on. we want like a proper. So this is this is a, oh so you've got a British Airways Amex. Yes. And um, there's lots of TFL. Yeah, that's just me going in and out of the city, isn't it? What is? Hey, and there's some Ubers there. Look. Yes, Ubers, Uber. Yeah. Um, there is uh, what's S P Fussy in Leighton? You spent sixteen pounds. Oh, oh, I thought it was supposed to be fifteen. Sixteen. They've added on a little cheeky pound there. What? Good job you did this. Good job I checked. Have a word. Should get on to the American Express fraud department. Yeah, office. get your money back. So you spent that oh, on February the tenth. Oh, that's um Fussy is the deodorant. It's ever so good. Oh, it's really really. I mean, I I know I'm doing an advert for them now. But well, anyway. you're a bit of an influencer. It does it does work well. And it, it, it has, like, um, bacteria in it, but, like, the good bacteria. Like a yoghurt when it's got the good... Right, OK. Baxilo... Uh, Lophilophilophilis. Mm, 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 it's the same for... Bifidus under digestivum. Because when you get um, um, odour under your arms, it's from bacte bad bacteria. Yeah, yeah. So it gives the good bacteria. So it kills the bad bacteria off. Right. It gives the good ones. So it's happy gut health under your armpits. Yes. Yeah. And the best really? bit about it... Is that I get texts from a man called Matt, who obviously is the founder of the company. Yes. So I get a text. Hi, it's Matt from Fussy here. Yeah. Just checking everything's all right with your order. It's obviously just goes to the office, but I always treat it like <laughs> it's Matt. And I sometimes say, oh, I hope you're having a great Christmas. <laughs> and, I, and I like them. Um, and I just ask uh, him what he's doing next week. Yeah. And I just, I, I just like just chat. And then sometimes they sort of give a hint, like say, um, Thanks for keeping us us informed. Oh, so it's not um, just mad. Like that. But they, they're hoping I'll get the hint, but I refuse <laughs> to get the hint. So I still just keep replying, oh, thanks, Matt. And it's great to hear from you and all this stuff. So, Ask him for a photo. Can I see a picture of your feet, Matt? You know what I mean? Just something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> to so yeah, that's, that's, that's that. And let's just look at one other one, right? Um, look, look, look. Here we go. Here we go. I haven't actually been using this one much. I've been using another one. Okay. Because I'm trying to... Uh, it's for someone. I'm trying to build up someone else's points. Yes, and you do, and the points will kick in. Yeah, I'm building up their points. For right. Okay. Reason. Okay. But there's still okay. a few things on there. Yeah. 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 Look, Premier in. Oh, look, this is good, Paul. This is a good place to yes. to wrap this up because this points us to what you're up to. The Premier in Tunbridge Wells, St Austell, Bristol South, Tewkesbury, and Liverpool. City. Oh yes. This is a man on tour. This is some. Some tour dates, yeah. This is a man on tour. But here's what I'm going to ask you. Which one of those do you think was the most expensive? So we've got Liverpool, Tewkesbury, Bristol, St. Austell and Cornwall, and Tunbridge Wells. Now, obviously, we can't see how many nights yeah, you're there. Yeah, some are more nights. Well, because the most expensive one, which surprises me, but maybe because you're staying down there a while because it's nice, St. Austell. Yeah, but I'm there for about four nights. Oh, uh, okay. Doing gigs every night? Well, I'm basing myself around there for, for yeah, a few okay. nights. I think okay. it's three nights. So that yes. would be why. Three, two, two. Three, two, Liverpool, three. £86. Yeah, it's only one night. Tewkesbury, how much do you reckon that Tewkesbury was? For a one for one night in Tewkesbury, Premier Inn. Oh, uh, 77 96 Yes. It's two rooms, though. The cheapest one? Oh, that's nice. They're all two rooms. Oh, what? Oh, well, no, some of them are not two, but most of them are two. Okay. What? So you've just got, you like to have multiple places to sleep? Well, uh, my manager and I... Ah, Much right. as we love each other, we like to sometimes, occasionally... There should be boundaries. You know, just to, to go to our own yes. bed. You know, it's nice. Yeah. There's something professional mm. about the idea of us not 
being at it. Being at it. Well, it's just, you know, it's not it's not what we're supposed to be doing, is it? I agree. I agree. I agree. You have to keep the sheen of professionalism, at least on paper. So there's a paper trail. There's a paper trail. There's a paper trail, but really we know what's really going on. Um, how much Tunbridge Wells do you reckon? This is quite cheap for two rooms in Tunbridge Wells, the Premier Inn. Oh, Tunbridge Wells is just one not- night. That's for various reasons. That's just me on my own. Okay. How much? Give us a number. £46. Pounds. 67 uh-huh. mm, 67 pounds. And there you are on tour, which is where uh, we will find you because people will go to HTT. P.S. Is that all you found? Well, yeah, there's lo- I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of TFL. Oh, I've got to do Face ID now. Look at it, please. There's a lot of um, TFL. There's a lot of Uber. There's a lot of Tesco. Yeah, I think all the really interesting things. Yeah. Are on the other credit card this month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, you know. Well, you can't have everything. I can't have. No, listen. I, I feel like we've got enough. I think we've got loads. It's so interesting. Um. So, uh, the new tour uh, dissolved, right? Dissolve. Okay. Fine. Dissolve. Dissolve, not dissolved. Uh, dissolve. Uh, dissolve. Puffett coming to a town near you soon, especially if it's near St. Austell, Tewkesbury, Liverpool. Birmingham. Birmingham. Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah. Uh, Tunbridge Wells. Oh, God. Tunbridge, I love a bit of Tunbridge Wells. Um, same boiler suit every night, the blue boiler suit? Blue. Okay, fine. So the green is... So this is your party boiler suit, right? If you're wearing the... Yes, yeah, so this is my... This is for... Um, Paul, it's been great. I think well, thanks, Tom. I've really enjoyed seeing you again. It's been really funny and lovely. And um, let's do this again in a few years. Preferably, don't buy anything else on Amazon because it's funny just to go into Amazon and just find oregano. No, well, I think I will be buying more oregano when I run out from Amazon. It'll uh, be okay. And part I've, of a, a pattern of yeah, yeah the oregano. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed going through your paper trail. It's been delightful, uh, Paul. For, thank you so much for coming on my mate bought a toaster. Oh, uh, thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me on. And thank you for. Thank me. Of course. I'm thanking thank you for thanking me for thanking you. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's my made water toaster. Oh, oh. it's my made water.